All right, we have a geometry question here, and we have a figure where points P and Q lie on the circle with center O, which appears to be on the origin, and we need to find the value of S. And S is the X coordinate of this coordinate here. So it's not as simple as just saying, oh, this X coordinate is root three or negative root three, so this one's gonna be positive. If it was, it wouldn't be a very challenging question. So what I want to imagine is, first of all, there's two ways to solve this. One is like technical and the other is just big picture. And big picture, I think, is always faster and usually it's more powerful. So imagine that we took this to an extreme so that we took this right angled shape and we moved it like this so that this was a right angle. And I understand that that's not perfect, but you get the picture. Basically, as I move this over this way, this moves up higher. And if you imagine moving it even further so that we got like basically down to the edge, if it was a right angle, the line would be something like this. So we would have a right angle here. And so what I'm seeing is there's a relationship and that relationship is that as the X increases in this direction and the Y decreases, the Y increases in this direction and the X of this original coordinate decreases. So for me, there seems to be a relationship between the X coordinate here and the Y coordinate here and the Y coordinate here and the X coordinate here. And so I don't think it's a root three for the S, but I think it's actually a positive one in terms of how far to the right this thing is and then root three would be the actual height. So it's like the points are reversed and this point is one root three. And this is just an assumption. I'm making this assumption based on the logic that I laid out on the right hand side. Whereas I move that, as I move this angle, there's some sort of like a push pull effect going on. And it's basically just tilting it so that that arm on the right hand side gets pushed higher and gets dragged closer. Okay, but let's actually prove this out because the GMAT uh, gave us some very easy numbers to work with here if we go through the effort of evaluating it. And all right, not bad for a half circle, I've seen worse. Um, if we draw this angle like this and we look at this negative root three one point to start, well, we can always imagine in coordinate geometry dropping down a vertical line and creating it an imaginary triangle like this. And if we know that the height of this imaginary triangle is one and the width is root three because the X coordinate is negative root three. So it's, it's root three away from the origin. And this one represents that this point is vertically one away from the origin. So we know that we basically have a right triangle that looks like this. And if we have a right triangle that looks like this, Pythagorean theorem has to follow. And you might be able to see this without even doing Pythagorean theorem, but this is actually a special type of right triangle. This is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So if you have sides of, in a relationship of x to x root three for the, two, uh, for the two sides of a triangle, the hypotenuse will always be two x. And that is because of Pythagorean theorem, one squared plus root three squared is equal to four, which means that the hypotenuse, which is C squared, the hypotenuse is equal to two. So we know the hypotenuse is equal to two. We also know that this angle, most importantly, is equal to, since it's across from the one, it's equal to 30 degrees. Now, since we know this angle is equal to 90 degrees, and the whole angle around here is equal to 180 degrees, that leaves 60 degrees for this angle. And if there's 60 degrees there, and we know that this can be made into an imaginary right triangle as well, this has to be 30 degrees here. And since we know that this uh, radius is the same on this side as it was on this side, it has to be equal to two, then we know that this side across from the 30 must be equal to one and this side must be equal to positive root three. So that's another way of solving it more technically. I know that that's a little bit difficult to see for some people. Um, basically what we wanted to focus on is 
can we find a relationship between the points on P and Q without just making a broad assumption? They never told us that this angle was perfectly centered like this. And in fact, if they did, this would have had to be a point of like one, one or something like that. And then, or sorry, negative one, one. And then this would have been like one, one, but it wasn't perfectly centered. We couldn't assume that. So we had to go through the math. The math tells us that point S is equal to one. And our answer here is answer choice B.